in your uh, in your time um, working in uh, in in television. Like Seventy-two years. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> in your time of working in television, I mean, you've you've seen already uh, the change in how it is that cable. Uh, the footprint and the legitimacy of cable has grown over the years. I mean, literally, people said to me, what are you doing? You're getting out of the business. Why are you going to work in cable? <laughs> well. I said, it's a job. Right. Um, and it's a great job. It's a great job. Um, so earlier you mentioned that, uh, that more and more of the uh, cable networks are, are moving to scripted. Um, what do you see? What do you see the next, the foreseeable future? I mean, what direction are we headed in? Are we headed in more scripted all round? Well, it's, it's really hard to say. I mean, the, the truth is that really good quality scripted programming is expensive. It's hard to do it on a budget. I mean, to do a really good, solid, quality scripted show for under $2 million an episode is really hard. Um, so you do have to do it for an outlet that's going to step up with money and the way just sort of as a, as a thumbnail what a studio does is a studio deficits the financing and a network will pay a license fee but it won't cover the entire cost of the show and an, a st really that's all right we'll just get it on the camera <laughs> so a network makes up their deficit in ad sales a studio makes up their deficit in international sales home video sales aftermarket sales as in syndication um, and w as we were talking earlier something like a Netflix which is a brand new I think what happened was Netflix saw how many shows like The Wire which has been off the air for so long has all of a sudden found a new life again because it's an you extraordinary can, show you can get the DVDs you can put it in your queue it's becoming you know the way I'm gonna Google that became a verb you know, Netflix, I'm going to put it in my queue. Everyone knows what that means now. And I think that shows that have been off the air for years are now finding a new life because the DVD box set. People are digesting television differently. People are watching it in, in w over a weekend or over two weekends or, um, you know, in bulks at a time. And so to be able to get the DVD and watch the entire first season of a show in a week or two weeks or a weekend or a day... Um, it is a very common occurrence, and so what Netflix did as I, I, you know, a very expensive experiment. I don't know if it was an experiment, but they uh, they ordered a series <coughs> and they produced the entire series and then released the entire series in one day. So you could order and download ten episodes. I think it's ten. Uh, it might be less. I don't know. How, do we know how many episodes House of Cards was? Twelve. Twelve. So you could download and see the entire season in one sitting and it's, it, they're calling it wildly successful now if it is or isn't if that's their PR you know machine I, I honestly don't know um, but I think that that's going to be another way that that TV is going to go but I do think it's going to be about it's it's at the end of the day it's a business and it's about how can we make the money back that we're spending if we're going to be spending $30 million on 12 episodes of television, how are we going to make that money back? Yeah, it has to be through, I mean, and Netflix advertising not, or subscription. And Netflix isn't going to have ad sales. They have subscription. Right. And they have rentals. And that they got a, they got a lot of rentals. You know, even if you figure it's 30 bucks for 12 episodes, you know, how many... Well, I mean, couldn't couldn't uh, have to watch a broadcast it to make couldn't a broadcast or a cable network step in and, and acquire it? Uh, they could, but you know, an acquisition versus a co-production, a broadcaster doesn't really want it. Why would they want to spend money on a show that's already had um, it's been exposed already in another in another avenue? Right. Um, and so they're going to actually spend less money, but then get a higher ad sell rate. So if, if a network spends $150,000 an episode on an acquisition, mm -hmm. or they spend a million two on an episode for, pr for a show that they're actually producing, you know, their ad rate for the, for the $125,000 an episode show will be lower, but percentage wise 
for how much they've paid versus how much they're getting, it's going to be a much higher value for them. So there is a lot of value for them to have these acquisitions if they're good. Um, but you can't build your network on that because you need to have that staple of really solid, amazing, wonderful shows that they are investing in so that they get a higher um, return on it as well. Okay. Um, and I know nothing about finance and budget and money. And yeah, so I'm not going. We're not uh, going yeah, in that direction. It's not my world. <laughs> um, uh, and do you, I mean, our, our web series, is the web coming more and more into your radar? You know, it, only in the world of comedy. I think that web dramas on the web, I, I have really not heard of any that have been wildly successful. I think that channels like Funny or Die are ways that people are finding new talent, whether it's writers, directors, actors. Um, and uh, I do see that web series in the comedy world, I think, has a, has a life. I, I don't know yet about drama. But it, is it a source of IP for, for Possibly. the... Possibly. Yeah? I think in comedy, much more so. Um, I think that, you know, you find comedies that were generated from blogs. You know, that, that what was that um, shit my dad says? Mm -hmm. Not successful television show, but it but was based on a blog. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I think that there's, there's potential for um, like an independent filmmaker who's making a comedy and, and doing it on the web. If they get enough hits, people are going to start recognizing and noticing and taking notice. I think a really big thing specifically that, that has been in vogue lately is... Um, um, formats. What that is is a television series that's on the air in another country. So The Bridge, for example, um, which is premiering on FX, I think. Maria. Uh, the Bridge. It's a Danish format. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, they're doing it in Canada, in Can excuse me, they're doing it in, in, in London as The Tunnel and in the U.S. as, I think it's called The Bridge. Uh, and it's... Um, and it's the U.S. U.S. Mexican border, and it's about um, the the original series was a bridge that was between two countries, and it, and murder happened on the bridge, sort of in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's about the two um, different law enforcement agencies that have to work together to solve the crime. Um, so, th so that's a format. And treatment was a format. The office is a format. Um, uh, Prime Suspect is a format. Um, Red Widow is a format. Um, you know, these are shows that that were that were uh, Homeland was a format. Um, these are all shows that were on the air elsewhere in the world, and somebody bought the rights to it and redeveloped it. And um, in some cases, it resembles very closely to the original show. In some cases, it resembles almost not at all to mm -hmm. the original show. I think if you look at the Ricky Gervais version of The Office, it has similarities to um, the Steve Carell version. Mm -hmm. um, mostly, you know, Ricky is a producer on the show, and I think in the very beginning, had an, I, I don't didn't work on the show, can't speak to it, but I think that he was involved a, at a certain point, you know, in in the development of it. But um, Homeland is wildly different, from what I understand, from the original Israeli format. Um, and it is an incredibly successful show and yeah. very, very, very well done. Um, but uh, the formats are another way that, that people are finding um, properties. So, um, you know, ideas and projects and shows sort of they come from everywhere. Um, but in terms of, you know, if your viewers are independent filmmakers and want to do a comedy in a web series, is that going to get noticed and could that, get sold yeah, maybe so just to, to sum it up then i think that uh web the web might be a, a place uh, to develop to develop it's, i think it's absolutely a platform to develop and, and cultivate talent yeah um it's not going to be a direct translation um but I, I i think that it's a way to get seen so how would it work? I you know, we 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 I I author a show and uh, it gets seen by a manager or an agent and then that manager or agent makes the makes the intellectual property a pitch. It might be that they just recognize that this person is a creative talent and they want to sign the writer to do other projects. Got it. Um, I 
honestly don't know the legalities of who owns what right. when it comes to the internet. Um, I always tell writers, whatever you do, register everything with the Writers Guild mm -hmm. so that it's protected. Um, I don't know how the internet works in terms of um, property That's protection. That's a fairly pain-free process, by yeah. the way. You just go online and register. Yeah. All right, well, so, yeah. um, Deborah, thanks so much for, for being here. For Sorry me. about the, uh, the outages that we experienced. Magic of television. The, the, ma <laughs> the magic of the internet. The internet audience will never know. All right, guys. Thanks so much for, uh, for being with us tonight. And again, sorry about the outages. And thank you very, very much. Thank you. Really appreciate you being here. Okay. Bye. <laughs>